Hello, my name is Britta Crawford. I work for the RCVS in the Education Department. Today I'm going to take you through the VET GDP ePortfolio from the graduates' point of view. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is to log in. The login button is on the RCVS home screen in the top right hand corner. You will use the same username as you do for your My Account and the same password. So here, let's log in. The first screen welcomes you, and then you click Get Started. You will choose your practice from the drop down list, continue, and also choose your advisor. If you don't have a practice or an advisor to choose, this means that uh, they haven't set up their relationships in their My Account or signed their declaration, so you will need to ask them to do so. You will then fill in your VET GDP questionnaire. The next thing you need to do is to build your ePortfolio. We suggest that you uh, talk through each EPA with your, your um, VET GDP advisor before you begin. But they are all set out for you here within the system. So this is EPA1, gather a history, perform an examination and create a prioritised differential diagnosis list. So I know that I'll be doing that, so I'll add this to my portfolio. There is 15 more which you can flick through and add which ones you feel are appropriate. I feel that those are enough. So we'll click, you do need to click through each of the EPAs and read all of them right to the end before you can finish your selection. You can then review your EPAs with this button at the bottom. And this will give you a list of all the EPAs that you've chosen. If you feel that um, the EPAs that are available on the system don't cover your entire job role, then you can create your own EPAs. It is worth noting though, that uh, the EPAs are, have been created at a deliberately high level to be able to adapt to as many jobs as possible. To be honest, if you're in kind of standard veterinary practice, it's likely that all these EPAs will cover you. It's only if you have kind of like a, a niche thing that you might need to add something. So if you do, you click on the create an EPA button, you give it a title, a description, the success criteria, if you know what they will be, and then you submit them and then you submit your whole selection. This will then um, flag up on your advisor's portfolio and they will approve your EPAs. Once they have done so, then you'll be able to start logging your activities and your reflections. The home button takes you to your recent activities. So any activities that you've logged in your ePortfolio will show up here. If you click on the Vet GDP ePortfolio e e button, it will show you your list of EPAs. To record an activity, you can either press the gold record an activity button in the bottom right hand corner, having already selected your EPA, or click on the record button in the top bar. You can then choose your EPA. So I will choose gather a history, name of activity, uh, let's call it vaccination of a cat, date completed, you can pick the date that you've done it in the past or just click on today's date, activity description, uh, vaccinating a cat, taking a history, doing an exam, talking to client. Was this activity observed by your VET GDP advisor? Yes it was. Did you receive guidance or support for this activity? Let's say, yes, it was. Next. Um, this screen then takes you through various different uh, success criteria so that we can look back and see the breadth and depth of activities that you've done. So we'll leave that as not applicable, low routine. We said it was a cat. Um, let's say a moderate degree of client cooperation and a moderate degree of animal participation and save. You can now either add a reflection straight away or you can click on that you can save it and then go back later and click on the reflect button and add one in later. There are two ways of adding a reflection. You can either press the guided button where it asks you questions to, to help your reflection or you can press the free button and you can just reflect reflect freely. 
So we'll do the guided one today. Which areas did you find challenging? Uh, let's say the, the client, oh, can't spell, the client could not remember all of the history and the animal was scared. Which areas did you complete well? You can say, um, I was pleased with the history I took and got all the relevant information in spite of a difficult client. I can't spell, there we go. Which areas need further development and goals identified? I will talk further with my advisor about goals on this issue. Any additional comments? Add additional comments. And you save your reflection. And it gives you a chance to re review. There's also an attachment session section, so you can um, upload any notes, upload documents. Um, if you've make an, made handwritten notes, you can take a photograph of those and upload them. You can record into it so that it um, records your speech, or you perhaps you can record the discussion that you had afterwards with your advisor, and you can also add that. I'm taking you back to the home screen then you can see that you're, there is your, your recent activities. And if you click on this, it shows you the information that's in there. Um, at least once a month, you and your veterinary, your vet GDP advisor should do a progress review. And to add one of these, you press this button here, view add progress reviews. So you're doing this on EPA one, and you would do a progress review for each of the EPAs add progress review. So hopefully you will have had a conversation with your advisor before you fill in this review. So in these, in these, um, in these boxes, you can fill in the information that the, uh, that the advisor has told you, the goals that you, have, that you have decided between yourselves, any reflections that you have over the month's work, uh, and, a, and a summary of that general discussion. You may ask um, how many activities should I include in my e-portfolio? I think it would be a good habit to get in to do to do at least one a day uh, because the more activities that you have in your e-portfolio the more you have to discuss with your advisor and the more learning opportunities there are. How to view and add progress reviews. So you want to log in as you usually would do and click on your vet GDP e-portfolio which brings you to this page. You will do your monthly review per EPA and ideally, you will have had your monthly review discussion with your Vet GDP advisor before you do this, but you could also sit down and do it together at the same time. I'm calling it a monthly review, but actually when you first start your job, these reviews, you might have one a week for the first couple of months or one every two weeks. Um, and, and then these will peter out as you become more confident and capable. So to create a new one, I'm going to do it for EPA one. So I've clicked on EPA one and then click on view and add progress reviews. And then to add a new progress review, you would click on this button here, but I am going to click on this one, which I did earlier, so I can show you what I have filled in. So, date of review, which I've put in as today's date, but you can put in as a date in the past, if that's more helpful to you. You would then add in a summary of your discussion with your, your vet GDP advisor. So the two of you would have been together and looked back on the activities that you've done for this EPA since your, your last review. So what I have added in here is um, discuss the activities logged since the last review and a few others, which my advisor felt that I should also have included in my portfolio. I've performed lots of vaccinations, which involve taking a history for each animal, performing an examination of each animal and talking to the owners. Vaccinations have been mainly on dogs, but also cats. I have dealt with some cases on my own where a colleague has advised the likely issue with the animal. So then I reflect on what I've done in, in those activities. So the vaccinations have been a great way of getting used to taking a history. So I'm much better at that. I'm better at the animal ha handling and, you know, asking for veterinary nurses to help me and, and they've, they've helped me become more confident to do that. More comfortable talking to clients because I've done that a bit more. 
and I've not yet created a prioritized differential diagnosis list on my own, but have talked through several with colleagues. So your, um, your advisor will have um, put down goals and an action plan with you. So this is what you would add into this section. So I've just probably put, um, see a wider variety of animals, see a wide variety of situations, and uh, start to move beyond vaccinations. The next page, you should also have discussed with your vet GDP advisor before you set your own levels. So the, this is a sliding scale, you click onto the button and you can slide it up and down. And it's starting on the left at day one competent level as you've left university, and it's moving towards becoming an independent, competent, confident practitioner. So as this, um, as this review has happened very early on in your, um, in your working career, in the first couple of weeks or the couple of months, you would still be very much on the left-hand side. So you haven't seen many different clinical presentations as they've had you doing vaccinations for the last couple of weeks. So this would be down here. Um, you've only really seen dogs and cats and, and, and really pretty much just dogs. So that's also towards the left-hand side. Again, still doing vaccinations. So the case complexity is still this side. Client cooperation, well, you might've had one tricky person that you've managed to talk around and persuade that you know you needed this or the other and, and help them in that way. So perhaps that's a little bit higher up. And um, you've had some really tricky cats that have been an absolute pain, but now you're really competent at dealing with them. So, so this has moved further up the line. Uh, your advisor can, can log into your account and, and see your monthly reviews. And they have this option here, this button to add their own comments. These will be broad comments and they might comment on any of the boxes, any of the goals or the reflections or anything, anything they feel you might have uh, missed from the discussion that you had. 